Good morning, and thank you for joining us for another one of our Meet the Specialist series. Um, and these are going down quite well, so we're very happy. I am absolutely honoured to have podiatrist Mr Stuart Hayes with us. Stuart has worked with MAG for quite a while. Now, um, he has impressive credentials, so mind me while I read my notes. Uh, he's a graduate of the Sydney Institute of Technology, and he's founded uh, his own business, Eastern Suburbs Sports Podiatry, that was rebranded later to Orthotic Solutions Podiatry. It's a very successful business covering all areas of podiatry, in particular sports, biomechanics, footwear and orthotic therapy. Um, Stuart is involved with a number of organisations across his industry um, and is very active in sport as well as we hear. Um, but look, his, his wisdom and his insight into why the feet are so important in the medico-legal context is fabulous. So without further ado, I hand over to you, Stuart. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Um, yeah, thanks for the intro. Look, I've been a podiatrist since December 94. Um, I was trained at TAFE, as Michelle said, uh, before there were degrees. So I've been around for a while. Um, consulted to NRL teams, Australian Open Golf, former lecturer at Western Sydney University in biomechanics and clinical supervision. Um, in the area of medical legal, the stuff that I see a lot of um, is what I'm going to quickly talk about today. The first one, we'll start off with the most common, is plantar fasciitis. Um, it is annoying to treat uh, as it is to attribute causal, causal effects. It's becoming more common because we have an aging population, we have an increasing body mass in our population as well. And in roles where somebody has to stand on hard tiled floors, wearing a work boot, or wearing a leather dress shoe, which doesn't have any shock absorption, they are more predisposed to it. Um, so if people in roles like factory floor workers, concierges, um, people, train station attendants, if they don't get to sit in between the trains arriving, um, I've seen quite a few of those. Nurses, however, nurses have the benefit of being able to wear a sports type shoe. So it is something that we see a lot of. And if it's somebody who comes to me and they're, a sedentary, they're in a sedentary role, it's not really going to be attributed to the employment. Uh, next thing I, uh, I will talk about is footwear. Um, a lot of the times a claimant will have a recommendation from a physio or a podiatrist to go and buy a certain shoe. So they might say, go and buy Asics Kayano or Brooks Adrenaline. Now, those shoes may help that person's level of pronation. It's where the feet roll inwards. And in doing that, um, sometimes they get the shoe paid for by the insurance company or the employer. 90% of the time, I disagree with that. Because what I'm seeing a lot of is people go to Kmart and they buy a price point shoe and they wear it to work and then they get aches and pains and they blame work for it. It's probably because they bought the wrong shoe. So it is very rare that I um, put a cost of a new pair of shoes that can be bought in a store to the insurer or the work uh, or the employer. On the flip side, if somebody has major injury and they need surgery and they need a medical grade shoe or, an, or a custom made shoe, yes, that would be attributed to the employer or the insurer. But majority of the time, the person just needs to buy a different shoe. And it doesn't mean the employment is a factor. Uh, another big thing that I see is people who were diabetic or are diabetic, sorry, I should say, they have diabetes and they haven't had the best care and they end up having a toe amputated or they end up having ulcers and feet amputated. And it's because a doctor or a podiatrist or whoever's caring for them doesn't realize the serious nature of the problem. There is no such thing as a low risk diabetic. It doesn't exist. They can all go from having a healthy blood sugar level to a really severe state of losing toes and feet and legs in two to three days. It's that quick if the blood sugar levels aren't maintained or a minor infection isn't managed correctly. So a lot of the time, let's say somebody goes to a 
uh, their GP because they've got an ingrown toenail and, then, and the GP has a go at it, just decides to, oh, I can get that out. And it isn't taken out correctly, that can get infected and then that can become a major problem and the person ends up losing their toe. So yeah, all of those things, if you have a diabetic payment or something, by all means, have them reviewed by a podiatrist. Uh, what else? I'm up to diabetes. I'm up to orthotics. Now, orthotics, the, the main area that I that I tend to work, I've been making orthotics for 30 years, so I know how to do it. Um, I am of the opinion that a claimant or even a private patient of my own should only ever order one pair of orthotics. Make sure they work first before you get approval to fit two or three pairs. There's never a guarantee in healthcare that anything is going to work. So uh -oh. don't spend the money on getting multiple pairs of devices if they're not working. So always get one, review after a month or two months, and then by all means, um, provide somebody with a second pair because two pairs, it's really annoying to swap them from shoe to shoe. Or if you've got a tradie, he's been on the tools all day and he comes home and he's gonna go out for dinner with his wife and he's got a stinky orthotic all day, and you, you can't do it, it's just not realistic. So two is appropriate. They should last around three or four years, but back to that tradie, he's gonna destroy his tradie pair a whole lot faster than his casual pair. So the replacement dates, there's no set rule on what should be replaced. They should be reviewed every 12 to 24 months. So that's a, that's a fair time frame. With conditions like plantar fasciitis, I don't agree that somebody should be getting orthotics for life because they had plantar fasciitis 15 years ago. Um, different to somebody who's got an arthritic big, big toe or an arthritic foot or an arthritic knee, they are different situations where they would probably need it. Um, so it's it's not black or white, it's, it's fairly gray. Now, a big thing that I've been seeing a lot of is I will be cautious here, are inappropriate treatment plans from podiatrists where the person gets referred to them for a condition and then the plan comes to the case manager and it's at a, they'll request 10 sessions of dry needling, 10 sessions of shockwave therapy, 10 sessions of joint mobilizations and 10 sessions of exercise and massage and manipulation, all at $150 each, they'll request two pairs of custom-made shoes and two pairs of custom-made orthotics, all in one big bill. So that's all approved for, it, it'll get to eight, nine, 10 grand. Don't approve it. It's crazy to go through and approve this broad plan that is not specific to the patient. I will be straight up. It's a money-making scheme. An appropriate plan might be for the person might need five sessions of shock, shock wave, see if it's working. They might need one pair of orthotics and one pair of medical grade shoes, see if they're working, then duplicate by all means. Um, but I'm seeing a lot of it. And um, yeah, it's frustrating cause it gives podiatrists a bad name. Like all we ever do is just give orthotics, give orthotics, give orthotics, or get the person back for more treatment, get the person back. It's a, it's a cycle that I, I would like to stop. Um, I'm happy to answer questions if there are any. Um, throw them at me. Thank you so much for that. That was really interesting. You just answered my question, though. I was going to say um, it was about the uh, orthotics you traded with his work pair and his casual yep. pair. Um, and so are, the, are those two different? Are they of different grade materials or would they both be the same, but he just uses one privately? Um, you can make it, if it's a tradie, they're obviously, obviously going to be picking up stuff. So he might pick up a 30 kilo bag of cement and put it on his shoulder and walk. So you often have to make the, the work pair firmer because he's doing other things in there. He might be hundred kilos, he's now 130 kilos. Okay. And also climbing and, and, and doing all these paths. So the pair that he goes out to dinner with or watches a movie with is sitting on his backside, don't need to be so intense. But they also might need to be smaller to fit a dressier shoe. Whereas a work boot is going to be a bigger 
bigger shoe, there's more room inside. So you can make, you can use a bulkier device with more reinforcement. Another question, thank you. Another question I had for you is reflecting on my own work life, which commenced actually with runway modeling uh, a long way away. But um, the fact that I have worn stiletto heels and pointy toed Mm -hmm. high shoes um, for much of my working career, and now I've got horrible gnarled feet with bunions coming along, in the, and obviously that was my choice to wear those shoes. So what what do you see in workplaces where people are required to dress in that corporate style, which means wearing heels? Um, I've never actually had a case where a female has come along and said, I meant to wear these corporate court shoes. Um, I, I'm getting bunions. Is that attributed to my employer? I've Honestly, never had it. Um, I would actually say, yes, that would be attributed because there is that requirement. Um, It's like flight attendants all have to wear a certain court shoe. Mm -hmm. I've seen flight attendants, but I've never seen them actually come along and say, work is causing my bunion. I've had people come along, damage their big toe joint, which is that joint there which ends up being a bunion and it goes sideways like that yeah um that's been damaged like people have dropped things on it or it's been injured but it's never never had the long-term overall effect of 30 years on your feet as a flight attendant yeah yeah yeah, because you would see with them the little toes turning under and, and that sort so of it thing. does happen yes it does happen it all adds up so that would be yeah, a cumulative effect of that. There is, look, men get bunions. I've got kids, eight-year-old, I've got a photo I show a lot of patients of an eight-year-old girl with bunions. So a lot of it is familial. So her yep. mother had bunions, her aunties had bunions, all that stuff. So if mm. you have that person who then goes into a career where they're required to wear shoes that are going to squash that way, it's just magnifying a pre-existing condition. So that's going to be a, com- a combination factor. Yeah, okay. And you mentioned, of course, you've done a lot of work with sports, um, mm-hmm. f- football in particular, but um, I'm thinking again of sports like netball where where in the past in particular there's a lot of pivoting and twisting of the feet Mm -hmm. but also ballet for example where there's a huge amount of stress on the feet coupled with the with point and binding of the feet yeah um sport causes injury so if you (laughs) if you go into being a boxer you're going to end up with a busted nose certain level of a brain injury and if you're a rugby player you're going to have cauliflower ears if you're a forward these things happen. Um, the as long as people are open to that and they understand, I'm going to end up with ugly feet if I do ballet. And yes. if you're a netballer, you're going to end up with repeated ankle sprains because that is what happens because you're always changing direction. Um, you just need to minimise it. Now, if you get a netballer who goes and buys a crappy shoe, and I'll just quickly grab a shoe. Okay. Um, going to my realm, Uh, a running shoe should flex at the front and it should twist a bit in the middle. But a court shoe like this, this is a tennis shoe, a tennis shoe should be really solid in the middle. So because the the action is a run that way, put plant your foot, bring back the other way. So you don't want a shoe like this that you can buckle around all over the place. This is a running shoe. That's a court shoe, happens to be tennis, but Tennis, netball, basketball, the body does the same thing. You just hit a racket or you throw a ball. Brilliant. That's what they really should be aiming for that. That is awesome. Thank you so much. Does anyone have a question they'd like to ask? No? Silence. Wonderful. I'm going to say that's because you answered all the questions because you answered all of mine. Um, Stuart, thank you so much for your time. Is there anything you wanted to add, add in that you forgot? No, all good. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody, you will receive a copy of the recording. And of course, you can view this on our YouTube channel. And I would absolutely urge you to do that and watch this space. Uh, Mr. Hayes will be doing a seminar for us later on in the year. Thank you thank so you. much and have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Happy Friday. Bye bye.